Okay, everybody. Um, welcome. And uh, this is our first session of the day, what's new in Sakai 25. I'm Wilma Hodges. I'm the Sakai Community Manager and the Director of Training and E-Learning at Longsite. So I'm going to take you through a whirlwind tour of um, the new features in Sakai 25, the upcoming release. Uh, you may know that we skipped 24, and that's because we went to a, a year-based numbering system. And so we didn't have a major release in this calendar year. So our next major release happens in 25. Um, we're thinking uh, quarter one of 25, so sometime in the spring, you know, early spring, uh, probably April, May-ish. It's always a moving target, but that's our target. Um, and uh, it's going to be the 25 version. But... Uh, before I get going, I just wanted to give you the TLDR is there is a lot of stuff <laughs> in 25. I know for a fact that I don't get to all of the features because um, there were some that I just left out. I didn't think that they would be, yeah, I'd be able to cover that many things. Uh, but many of these items were uh, new courtesy of the S2U and EDF work that came out of the Unidigital plan in Spain. So we have them to thank for that. A lot of this stuff was sort of developed in parallel with uh, Sakai 23 and then merged back for 25. So that's why we got this huge influx of a lot of those um, new features coming from the folks in Spain. Uh, but not to you know discount the developments that were happening um, you know right here in, in, in the normal branch of Sakai. Um, so you put those two together, you end up with quite a lot of features. So I might, I might not get to everything. I'll try to hit as many of the highlights as I can. And of course, you know, uh, we'll, we'll put out updates about other things you know throughout the year if there's something really notable. So um, there were quite a lot of accessibility improvements in, um, in, let me just make sure. Okay, yeah, I am recording. <laughs> there are quite a lot of accessibility improvements in 25. Many of these were merged back into 23. And these are just a, a three that I noted that were counted as feature items, but there were a whole bunch of other ones, like I said, that got merged back to 23. Um, you're gonna see more on accessibility later today and you'll see just how much uh, attention, the accessibility features and, and bugs have gotten over the last couple of years. So um, this is just a very, very small sample, but there was quite a lot of activity in the accessibility area to make Sakai even more accessible for folks using assistive technologies. Um, there was a JSF upgrade which affected several tools like chat, discussion, sign up, tests and quizzes. Um, so this was some kind of behind the scenes work that was very important, uh, not necessarily super visible to the end user, but still something that was kind of a major um, change in the upcoming release. Uh, we have some new languages, new and updated ones. So we already had a Spanish translation, but it was um, enhanced and added to as well as the Basque translation. And we have a couple of new languages as well. So we ha now have a Romanian translation and a Serbian translation of Sakai. So, um, so that's uh, thanks to our international folks helping to contribute additional languages and uh, enhancements for languages. There is a new bulk publish, unpublish for tools that have draft items. So for things like assignments, as you see here, if you have several assignments you wanna publish all at once, you can um, select them and then either publish or unpublish um, the group at one time. And in tests and quizzes, you also have the same thing with your assessments. You can't unpublish um, and make it a draft again because in tests and quizzes, you kind of keep that draft copy as a working copy all the time, but you can publish in bulk. So if you have a whole bunch of quizzes that you wanna publish all at once, you can do that now. So I, that, uh, I'm sure people with Carpal Tunnel will be very happy about those two things. <laughs> you don't have it anywhere near as many clicks if you've got a whole lot of things to be published. Um, the user's role is now displayed. You'll see when you log in, you'll see up here, it'll show your role in a site. You have to be in a site to see your role, um, but you'll see that up at the top. There is a new admin pool. 
uh, bulk user membership. So this lets you add people to either add multiple people to a site or add multiple sites to a person um, in at one time. Um, it, you can add multiple people to a site pretty easily by going to the site, but sometimes it's a little more cumbersome to add a, a person to multiple sites. So this lets you do it a little more seamlessly for the admin. So that's kind of a nice handy feature. Um, in assignments, there is now a filter for the groups in the new Sakai grader. So um, before, like we, when you went to the grader, you had to kind of reselect the group. It didn't retain the group from this screen. But right now, if you're in the submission screen and you select a group of folks, when you go in, it's going to automatically have that group selected in the Sakai grader. So, um, and you can always change it from here too. If you go to the little settings cog, it'll show you which group you have selected and you could change it there, but it just it retains that information. So it makes it a little easier if you're um, kind of doing one group at a time. Um, there is a course cards widget now in the home dashboard. So this is the home dashboard, not the course dashboard, because the home dashboard is where you would see all of the courses in which you're enrolled. Um, and you can see here, I've actually got a background image for these um, course cards. Those images are coming from the course dashboard in each of those sites. If you have the course dashboard with an image, for the site image, um, that's what it uses as a background. So just if you're wondering where those came from, that's where they came from. But it gives kind of a nice visual element to the dashboard um, and lets you easily uh, see the courses that you um, are enrolled in. You can also filter by term, you can sort by title, you can look at pinned or unpinned um, or all sites. So um, so it gives you some nice functionality there in the in the home dashboard. The date manager now has export and import options. So if you have a whole bunch of things that you wanna update and you don't wanna use the shift by dates, um, you wanna just upload a list of new dates, you can do that now. So you can um, export the dates, change them, import them back in with all new deadlines. Um, so that, that's a nice time saver if you have a lot of things to change. Um, this one we've been wanting for a long time. This is more granular site import options. So when you do a copy from site to site, you go into the site info, import from site, and you select the course that it's coming from, you can actually open up these um, tools and things that have multiple items in them, like assignments or discussions or lessons. You can just select the ones you want to copy instead of having to copy everything and then delete the stuff you don't need. So um, so this uh, should be really cool um, for people that like to bring over just certain pieces of content selectively, um, pick and choose the pieces that you want to copy over. Template sites are now included in the list of sites available for site import. Now, why is that important? A lot of um, institutions have master courses and you need an easy way to um, be able to copy that master course content into a course site. Now you can do it if you go through the create site, um, create as temp or create from template, you can do it that way. But a lot of people prefer to go to site info and just pull the content in when the course site already exists. Um, and this works also well with the LTI plus um, type of, of site where the site itself is already there. You're not creating one. Um, so you want to be able to pull from a template without necessarily having to enroll everybody in the template so that they have access to it. So um, anything that's listed as a template in your server would show up here. And then users who are copying from site to chat site can choose the template site to um, pull in that content to their course. So that's a really cool uh, new feature. LTI assignments now support group submissions. So in prior versions, um, the group stuff was not quite working as expected. So it just got, kind of got turned off and automatically if you selected LTI. Um, once you selected LTI, it turned off the group functions. But now um, it's been enhanced so that groups actually work. Um, so now you can choose your group once you select a um, 
an LTI assignment, and then you'll see, um, you know, you can view the submissions by group. These are group assignments where one person is submitting on behalf of the group. And um, for grading as well, you'll be grading by group. Um, so, uh, and you'll see the submission down here, the LTI tool will appear in the preview window. So that's exciting news for LTI assignments. Um, there have also been some updates to the registration um, UI in uh, the LTI dyna dynamic tool registration. So I'll just kind of walk through these so you can get a sense. This is again, more for admins. Um, but when you go to install an LTI tool, we've pulled out some of the information here um, onto a separate page. And then from here, you would use the dynamic in, um, registration button and plug that information in. But then you would, when you come back here, you'll notice that some of these um, items are in a little bit different order. They've been sort of moved around into an order that hopefully makes a little more sense. And um, some of the placement options, if they require separate um, things to be selected, like resource link, for example, must be selected if you have site level nav as a placement, it gives you a little pop-up to warn you that that, ha that is happening. So you know that you need to select to that if you haven't already. Um, and uh, again, the, the order of some of these items has changed a little bit to hopefully make it a little easier to, um, to understand as you're adding LTI tools. LTI tools can also be deployed to multiple sites now. So um, if you have a tool that you've added and you go to this deployment link here, it will let you plug in multiple site IDs for the sites that you want to put it into. And then um, once you save it, then you can see that, whoops, let me go back. You got it deployed to those sites. I guess I didn't show the confirmation page. I thought I had one more a picture on that one, but no. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, there is also another new tool called the Microsoft Admin Tool, and this goes with um, some of the, those enhancements from the EDF folks um, as part of the SU2, S2U project. And um, if you have Microsoft uh, at your institution, you want to integrate it, you've, you've got this uh, manager tool here that allows you to, to set up the configuration and to choose um, what kind of filters you want and how you want it to link up with Teams. Um, there's a new meetings tool that works with Teams, which allows you to schedule and view recordings and all that kind of stuff right from within a course. And um, some additional uh, integrations with the Microsoft Suite is uh, collaborative documents. Um, I showed you already the group user group synchronization tool. There's OneDrive integration, also a stream integration. So very tight integration with a lot of those Microsoft um, uh, applications. And uh, so if you're a Microsoft school, that's good news for you. Another tool that's been streamlined is the profile tool. Now you may remember that there used to be um, some additional tabs here. There were connections and um, you could search for connections. You could upload things. It was sort of like a lightweight Facebook um, back when Facebook first came about, uh, but people weren't really using it for social media. And you know, there's a million other tools you can use for social now. So, um, so this was really just kind of a way to feed the roster information. Um, so it's been streamlined to just keep the things that are really used a lot um, in conjunction with roster, um, but it's still it's still there. So it's a lot cleaner, a lot easier to work with, and, and we've kind of moved some of the redundant code out of the system. So that's always good to clean things up. Um, <clears throat> and for rubrics now, admins have the ability to unshare rubric. Sometimes you might have people who've shared a lot of rubrics at the institution and they um, leave and the rubrics are still kind of hanging out there. And so you end up with a lot of rubric clutter. Well, this is a way to declutter some of that information out in the, in the public rubric space. So an admin can go in there and revoke public sharing on a rubric. They can also remove a rubric if need be, um, but usually revoking sharing just kind of gets it out of everybody's list. Um, so that's something that you can use now to clean that up. Um, and rubrics also support group submissions. Um, this was something that was, again, a little problematic before, but now if you have a group 
um, assignment and you're grading it as a group, the group will work with, um, it'll send those grades, those, those rubric scores to all the folks that are enrolled in that group. Now there are a whole lot of tests and quizzes improvements. So I'm not even gonna try to get through them all. We could probably do a whole session on just tests and quizzes. Um, so I've got a bulleted list here, which I will go through very briefly. Um, and of course, there's more information in JIRA if you want to look there at some of these. Um, there's more information uh, on MASTER if you want to go play with uh, tests and quizzes there to see some of the new stuff. Um, one thing that I will point out that is super um, important is this new safe exam browser. This is an open source version of lockdown browser, kind of like Respondus like lockdown browser for those of you who may use that. Um, but it's included, this integration is included with Sakai. So you can make a Sakai assessment, a safe exam assessment, assessment and um, they have to use that specific browser to be able to take it. It's it's very similar to lockdown browser. So um, so if you have a testing center situation where you want to be able to lock down the computer for folks while they're taking the exam, um, this is another option that is free uh, because it's open source. So you, it's, it doesn't require any kind of um, subscription. So that's exciting news for, for people who like uh, the lockdown browser. Um, there, you also can associate an exam with an existing gradebook item. That's new. Um, there's some changes in question pools. You can show historical changes for questions. You can reshuffle parts using random question pools. Um, there's more instruction um, about calculated questions, how to set those up. Um, you can, uh, there's more reporting on the pool events. So when you copy, move, uh, re grant, revoke, there's more reporting on that um, in the event log. You can uh, show a message when loading submissions. So if there's a big list that's loading, it gives you kind of a loading message that lets you know something's happening. It's not just a blank page. Um, you can include the editor in the student's rationale. So that's a, a multiple choice um, when you answer and then you have to say why the rich text editor is included there for students. Um, you can export student scores from the to total scores page, not just from the statistics area. And you can include question text and score when exporting responses. Um, you can also print the exam, uh, full exam on the same page. You, there's more info in the sam.assessment.graded.auto event. So if you're looking in the event log, you'll see a little more context there. Um, it reports an event when an, an instructor allows a retake. And there's some new sharing permissions and question pools. So you can give people limited rights to a pool instead of like owner rights. You can just have view rights and things like that. Um, there's now a question pool export improved event logging, um, the option option to show the right or wrong, but without indicating, oops, sorry, without indicating which is correct. Um, you can accept HTML in the markup editor. Um, so if you're doing the, the uh, markup text to bulk import stuff, you can now format that text so that it's not just plain text coming in. Um, uh, you can do random questions from multiple pools. There's an option to use fixed questions and random questions from question pools on a part. You can search by keyword in, qu in question pools. You can sort by uh, folders and usage stats in question pools. Um, there's now a time limit per question or page, and there's improved navigation when grading. So again, I didn't even try to cover any of those in depth. Um, like I said, we could probably have a whole session just on tests and quizzes. Um, there is a new, uh, you probably noticed the Streamline CK editor if you've done any kind of um, testing on, on Trunk. Um, if, if your institution is, has already customized it, you'll just see your custom tool links. Um, but the default out of the box Streamlined editor has been updated to show the more popular tools so um, that you can still expand it to see the full set, but that first row has things that are a little more um, commonly used by the average author. So that was an update to that. 
Um, the SCORM player, I don't know if any of you guys are using SCORM player, but it is now part of Core Sakai. It's been around for a long time as a contrib tool, but now it is part of the core code and it does allow you to bring in SCORM packages and have the results display right in Sakai, link up with the gradebook to send grades. Um, you can see here, there's a, these are the configuration settings. You can send scores to the grade book. And then you can also see um, the attempts and it gives you some interaction data when, um, when users attempt a SCORM object. So, so that's uh, an alternative to paid types of integrations like SCORM Cloud and others. So this is, again, it's part of Core Sakai now. So it'll be maintained and updated. And it does only accept um, 2004 third edition objects, but as long as you meet that criteria, it works pretty well. So um, if you have a lot of SCORM content, I definitely um, recommend checking it out. There is a new uh, name that face game, and I'll play this little video to show you kind of how it works. This is in the roster, and it allows you to quiz yourself on student names. So you can see any uh, profile photos that are in there, and then you try to pick the name, and it'll tell you if you got it right or wrong. And you can keep doing that until you learn the names of the folks in your class. So, um, so hopefully that will come in handy for folks that use it as a, a memory tool. Here we go. All right. In lessons, we now have item, a view item based on grade conditions. So again, these are some screenshots of what that looks like. I can't go through it in depth because we just don't have the time. But essentially, it allows you to do a conditional uh, release that's not based on sequence on the page. Um, but you can set conditions and then choose from um, any conditions on that page, whether they're you know above or below the item that you're you're working with. Um, so it's it kind of broadens the ability of doing selective release in lessons beyond what the current prerequisites allow you to do. The wiki tool now has support for groups. So if you type in um, Sakai sections in the little curly brackets, it will make a page for each group in the course. And each group, you'll see this is, has a group label, has their own kind of wiki area in the site. So that's um, something that's new for the wiki tool. Uh, if you have a lot of group work, this is a great way to support that. In announcements, you have the ability to highlight an announcement to make it a little more eye-catching in the list. And this is what it looks like. It's a, kind of a little bold and it's got a star next to it. So um, those are what the highlighted announcements look like. Also in announcements, within a site, you can now um, assign to roles in the site. So um, if you only want something to go to students or you only want something to go to instructors or TAs, you can send that announcement to just those roles. Tags are now supported in assignments and messages. Now you do have to turn on a few things in Sakai properties related to the tag service for this to be available, but it allows you to tag things and then you can search by tags to find items either in private messages or in assignments. You also have the option to get a read receipt for private messages. Um, so you can read those um, when they, you'll see when students open them, you'll get a read receipt. You also have the ability to convert to a, a, a forum post. So a lot of times students will ask questions that really should be a discussion so that everybody else can see the answer. So you can actually send that over to the discussion area and have it be a, a post in the FAQ. And there is an HP5 LTI tool. This was a contrib tool, so it's not part of core, but it's a contrib tool that's available that allows you to, um, to put in HT or H5P content. Um, so it's pretty cool. And we'll probably get um, maybe EDF or someone to do a demo of this at teaching and learning at one of our upcoming sessions. Um, and then there's also a grade book for groups. So if you have multiple uh, groups in a site and you want to have a grade book for each, you now can have multiple grade books um, in a course. 
So that is the quick and dirty overview of the majority of the new stuff in Sakai 25. Um, I hope I stuck to my time okay. Let's see how we're running on time. Okay, yeah, we have about four minutes for questions. So let me check the chat here and see if there's anything else that people have asked about. Okay, I see a bunch of people saying, wow, how so much. Yep, there's a lot. <laughs> Definitely a video to review. Yeah. Um, Dave, you asked about recommendations for upgrade to 25. Uh, I would say if you're thinking to go to 25, maybe start thinking about upgrading over the summer or before fall term would be a good time if if we come out as expected. We're hoping to get 25 out in the, in the spring term. So um, if those of you that are thinking about your up, upgrade schedule, if you upgrade in August, you know, before fall semester, or if you like to upgrade sometime over the summer, like June, July, um, those might be some opportune times to think about upgrading. So yeah, and, but we'll have to kind of wait and see, wait and see how the um, the release actually does as far as making it out. Because we did start a little bit late. We held it up because there were so many things to be merged. So the freeze date has been a little delayed. Um, and hopefully we can kind of make up time in the early part of next year and still get it out uh, during quarter one. Yeah, and, and Chuck is saying that 25 is on the nightly master server. So if you go to um, nightly, if you go to the first link on there, that's master and 25, and you can test things out now if you want to check it out. Um, all right. Any burning questions? Not seeing any. All right. So we will break just a couple minutes early. We've got 10 minutes before our next session, which is um, Adrian's going to be telling us all about Sakai, Sakai the progressive web app. So um, again, for those of you interested in mobile, this is all about mobile, uh, making use of some of the new um, new trends in modern browsers to make Sakai uh, more mobile friendly and to have an app that ties in very closely with the responsive website. So it, it should be an interesting session. Um, and that is up next in about 10 minutes. So we'll take a little break in between now and then, and I will see you back at uh, 10.50. Thanks guys. <laughs>